Pedro Olguin, the man himself, is live now, live Q&A on all of the social worlds, as well as here in the studio. Editor, thanks for coming, man. All right, thank you for having me. Author, entrepreneur, uh, philanthropist, husband, mentor, Colombian, doing your thing in America. I mean, this author of this incredible book, which I want to talk about. Actually, I want to do this. Before, we t before you tell us all this stuff that you're doing, okay. I first of all just want to say, if you're looking for an incredibly inspiring read, Dreaming of Hope Street is Edder's basically, basically his story of how he ended up here in the United States very intense childhood. Um, came from an abusive home where he ended up leaving at a young teenage year. Uh, ended up living homeless for several years in Medellin, Colombia. Back in the 80s when Medellin was like awful and people were like being shot and killed everywhere. Um, and then ended up, total success story, ended up leaving Colombia, coming to the United States and starting at this point three multi-million dollar businesses, right? That's right. Yeah. So, like, another incredible immigrant story. I, 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 we could spend two hours talking about this, but I'd just recommend two things. Number one, buy the book. It's incredible. I read it in two days. Um, and by the way, you don't, you don't know this, but I'm going to buy five of your books, and we're going to give away five books oh, nice. to people that are going to take practical action on Great. the strategies that you give today. Great. Cool? I'll sign in on that. Perfect. Cool. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, I actually had the pleasure of featuring this guy on Forbes magazine. Um, so check out, uh, I think we called it Dreaming of Hope Street, right? Wasn't it the title? Probably. Something like that. Check it out, Forbes.com, uh, just to get a little bit more of his background, his story. But today, this very busy man has graciously, and we are super grateful for this man, um, said like, hey, I want to come in and answer your audience's questions about social, about digital marketing, about strategy. Um, which would cost like I, I probably more than I pay for this whole office uh, for the hour <laughs> to get you here. So really appreciate it, man. So just really quickly tell us who you are, why you do what you do. Uh, give us a quick five minute background about that piece of the story. So as you mentioned, I grew up in Colombia. I was born in Medellin. Uh, I grew up in Medellin during the 80s, the time where Medellin was completely controlled by drug lords and there were so many things going on at the time. I moved to the United States when I was 19. Uh, I came here through Mexico, yep. which is in the book. Uh, I couldn't get a visa at the time, so I moved to Mexico, came to the United States, did a lot of the usual jobs that we do where I learned the language. I cleaned tables, I waited tables, I cleaned uh, apartments. I did a lot of the typical jobs that we do as immigrants. Uh, I got involved in digital marketing when the internet started, 96, 97. When I was living homeless in Latin America, I was selling products door to door. I learned how to do sales, that's how I got involved in digital. I had a great mentor who taught me a lot about the business. And the company I was involved, the first startup that I was involved got acquired by a Fortune 500 company called Equifax. Um, so working at Equifax, I learned a lot about data, I learned a lot about digital marketing, email marketing. Started my first uh, company in 2004, um, did about $12 million in revenue. The company was acquired three years later. Uh, and then since then, I built two other companies. One is a content syndication platform called Ideal Media, which was also acquired in 2015. And my company now is OneCube. We do audience development. Uh, for a lot of different types of industries. So in essence, that's, that's me. Yeah, and, and you know, I think that the, for me, the, the, the incredible thing about your story is um, you've, you've basically, what you're talking about with social, right? Social media, as a, and by the way, what Inc. named you the number one, what was the title? Number 29 digital marketer in the world or something, right? So like, the cool thing for me about this, what you're offering today, and just the way that you've built your businesses is that you're actually offering advice based on multi-million dollar businesses that you've built on the back of the strategies that you're gonna be giving people, right? So there's a lot of digital media experts out there. Uh, 
on, you know, that are claiming to be digital media experts that have never built businesses. Yeah, they never run campaigns for at all. Some 500 companies. They never built out companies from the scratch. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, the, I'm on my phone now because I'm actually there's questions coming in for you. Okay, um, so 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 w what we're gonna do for this thing, this session, this this call-in show is there are actually people that have left their numbers um, that have questions for you. The first one is coming from Florida, and his name is a Beezer, and basically I'll let him kind of describe what he's doing. But he is just taking over the family steel coil business. And he wants to know how to use social and digital to do that. So let's give him a call. Um, this is actually like one of the first legit call-in shows we're doing. So this is pretty awesome. All right, here we go. So a Beezer. Okay. See if he's there. Hello? Abizar Gadiali, this is Brian Rashid with Edder Holguin, and you're on BTV. Oh, hey, hey, Brian. Thanks for giving me a call. I, I was hoping you guys would give me a call. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your Instagram DM. Uh, really excited to hear about what you're doing with the family steel business. Um, and the man himself is here to help you. So, Edder, this is Abizar. Hey, Abizar. Nice meeting you. Hey, Edder, it's a, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really excited to uh, pick your brain about some of, the, some of the issues I'm having. So thank you guys so much for giving me a call. Sure. Our pleasure, brother. Yeah. And Abizar is also, um, he's, a, he's, a very, he's very passionate about Latin America. Edder is from Colombia. So uh, oh, wow. we, all, we all share the, pu the, pura, the pura vida love. So um, Abizar, tell, tell us how we can help. Tell us a little bit about your, your, your story right. and your question. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, by trade, Edder, I'm a I'm an attorney. Practiced for several years, uh, and my parents, growing up, they had a steel trading business. They uh, buy and sell steel coils. Uh, they sell it to other distributors, uh, manufacturers, end users, things like that. Uh, just January of this year, uh, well, the end of last year, I left the the legal practice, and uh, beginning of this year, I joined. My parents did a small business with myself, my mom, my dad, a couple of other uh, administrative employees. And one of the things that I've been doing is basically trying to bring the business to the 21st century. Uh, my parents have done a lot. They've, they've built the business from nothing and have brought it to a, a good standard. Uh, but they don't, they haven't really uh, incorporated a lot of social media and social media outreach to get their names out there, to get the business name out. Uh, not a lot of people know about us. And so that, uh, you know, so I'm trying to kind of revamp different aspects of the business uh, technology wise, one of which being uh, social media, media presence. Um, and, but the other difficulty that I have, and, and then I'll turn it over to you guys, is a lot of the steel industry itself is uh, it, it, it's a little bit of an older industry. You know, it's it's uh, it's not it, it is advanced. LinkedIn, I would say, is probably the most used uh, social site that I've seen that people use. But I want to increase that, not and, and and branch out beyond just LinkedIn to uh, other other social media aspects. But I'm just not sure you know, what I should do and how I should be putting out my information. Okay. So this is cool. This is like a family business in an industry that's a bit antiquated and he's trying to rev up using social to come into the 21st century to, to build it to another level. Yeah. So um, for Correct. any, any, any uh, business out there, the whole idea of using digital marketing is amplifying the message that you have. So step number one, you need to understand who is your audience. Who are your buyers? What are you selling? Why is your product different? So this goes into understanding the specific audience. You have to be as specific as possible. So, um, you know, if you're looking for certain income levels, certain titles, uh, individuals in certain regions and locations, you understand and reverse engineer your plan based on that. What is the problem that your product is solving? 
uh, there has to be a specific need in the marketplace and how your product is solving that problem to start building your messaging. So start with your audience, make what we call marketing personas, which are basic simple stories that say, okay, here's my ideal uh, buyer. His name is Brian, he's 50 years old, he works in XY company, this is the problem that he's dealing with. You start building these quick storyboards and you come up with a couple of different personas. This can be either resellers that will resell for you. This can be end users that have a particular problem that your product solves. Uh, once you build the storyboards, you get a pretty good sense uh, of who these people are. Who are the people that your product is gonna help? And then you start thinking, where do these people go? <clears throat> if it's an audience, as you mentioned, that's a little bit older, then obviously probably LinkedIn is a great social media network, as you mentioned. Uh, but you know we right. have companies. I work with a company called Oil Price, <clears throat> and they look to target oil traders and people on Wall Street. Um, so one of the things that we do in social media, we start thinking about tracking particular placements and URLs. So for example, there are websites and publications, mm -hmm. digital places where your audience is hanging out. They're there, they're reading content, they're engaging with particular placements. Make a list of all these URLs. Maybe they're in oilprice.com, maybe they're on a, a steel trading uh, website. So you start understanding right. who your audience is. You understand what content they read, what are they sharing, what conversations are they having on social media. And then based on all this information, now you can start crafting a message and saying, okay, so if Victoria's Secret, the women that are 18 to 25, then what is the message that we want to convey to them and how do we market to them? What are the places they hang out? Um, so understanding placements, understanding your audience and how to reach them. Facebook, by the way, just as Twitter does, yeah. allows you to target specific placements and you can run very simple paid campaigns that will cost you $20, $30 to test when you can build a simple message to send people to your website and you can do keyword targeting for either people that are interested on your services or you can mine audiences from your competitors or other companies. So on Twitter, you can say, I want everybody who um, is tweeting or is a um, follower of you know, these five or six brands that compete against you and you can target your message to them. So that's step number one, understanding your audience. So, so I, I want to just stop you for a second because this is great. So the, the reason that I want to do a call-in show is because I want to get super deep and practical with the person calling, right? Okay. So Abizer, do you know who who is that per, right. who is that audience for you? And so, you know, it, it's interesting because when he, when Edder said, you know, there's a website called Steel Market Update. And one of the things is that, you know, that Steel Market Update website has a you know, uh, valuable resource of information where people go where I think one of the things that a lot of people want to know is where are the prices of, of uh, you know, like iron ore, which is one of the raw products that they use in the production of steel. Yep. What are the prices of scrap and where are they going? Um, and right now, you know, people go to these kind of websites to find out, you know, what are the steel mills doing? Are they increasing? Are they decreasing? How's their production? How's this? So, so that's kind of where the people go to, to look at for the information for my industry. Right. Who am I targeting? I think targeting wise, it would be good for me to target you know, up, uh, the manufacturer. So for example, I would sell a steel coil to a guy that's going to make trailer parts for RVs. So now there's an RV manufacturer and they got to make the, the this, the that, the, all these things. I want to target all these RV manufacturers in a particular area to say, hey, by the way, I can provide you with the steel that you guys need and I can do it better, faster, more reliable, better customer service, you know, give them the edge that they're looking for when, when doing that. Right. Cool. So with that information, what would you say? So, um, so now you, you, you know who your competitor, you have an idea of who your ideal target audience is. The next thing is, um, so what you mentioned, by the way, um, about people going there because they want to understand or get information about steel, uh, that's called a hook. Mm -hmm. And a hook is why people keep coming back to do particular things. Now that you understand the hook, that is your main value proposition. The question is, how can you build that into your product now? If you have a website, 
Maybe you don't have a particular feed that tracks the prices real time, but maybe you can write content around that. Maybe you can speculate and say, okay, here's my take on the pricing right now for steel. I believe under the new precedent, this will either go up or down, uh, or, or tap into news and trending topics to build content to engage that audience. Social media is about having conversations about particular topics and providing information. It's not just about bombarding people with ads and sales and say, bye, bye. It's about, hey, I'm providing great information, engage with me, and then let's see if this can facilitate a transaction. Right. Is that helpful, man? Awesome, awesome, guys. Yeah, absolutely, a lot of great ideas. Thank you guys so much. Awesome, awesome, Abiza, awesome. good luck. All right, guys, Brian, Edder, thank you so much. Thanks for calling, I really appreciate it, thank you. Our pleasure, brother. Talk to you soon, peace. All right, cool. So that was good. That was, that was fun. So we have another question that came in. This guy has five minutes, he said. Can we call him real quick? You good on time? Yeah. All right, cool. Good. We're going to call Alex from San Francisco, California. Hello? Hello, is this Alex? This is Pete. Hello, Alex. This is Brian with Edder Holguin, and you are live on BTV from 85 Broad, S-T-R-E-E-T. <laughs> This is exciting. Uh, New York. Alex, are you a Golden State Warriors fan? How could I not be? Hey, there you go. <laughs> Congratulations. Guys, guys, listen, I just, I have kind of a meta question. It's kind of a, a psychology, a family. It's something that transcends all these transactional conversations we're having about what social actually does. Yep. My experience is as I'm building social yep. a presence, as I'm working, spending a lot of time in this, I'm getting pushback from my loved one. You're spending too much time on the phone. You, you, all you care about is Instagram. All you mm. care about is Facebook. What advice do you have for all of us that are spending a lot of time building our businesses? Maybe they just don't understand their employees, perhaps. What advice do you have for someone like us to, I don't want to say justify, but help them understand just how important this is? That's yeah, a great question. That's a, good question. that's a great question. Um, look, it's, it's, it's tough. Being an entrepreneur is not easy. Everybody thinks about the money and the cars and the expensive watches and all these great things, but you have to hustle. You have to work. If you think it's a 40 hour a week thing, you're absolutely wrong. Um, I work a lot and I deal with some of the same issues. Um, so I think important thing is time management. Understand and allocate time to your loved ones. Obviously, your wife or girlfriend or your friends or your significant others, you need to make sure that you allocate time. Um, on the weekends, I try not to answer email, at least on Sundays. I try to disconnect. I go ride horses or motorcycles. And right. I, don't, I don't answer phone calls unless something is incredibly important. So you need to make sure that you carve out time for your family, for your loved ones, uh, because yeah, I mean, I worked a lot, and, and you know, it's it's difficult when you're beginning to build a business. You have to do everything on your own. You have to do your social media, you have to do your content writing, you have to do sales, all these different things. So if you carve out your day and say, okay, in the morning, for example, I come into the office and I put my headphones on and I don't talk to anybody and I write proposals and emails all morning. That's all I do. Don't talk to me, I'm busy. And I do that and then I do uh, meetings in the afternoon when I do demos and phone calls with clients. Um, so if you start carving out different times of the day for specific things, you become a lot more organized with your time and then you yeah. have time allocated for specific things. Um, I don't well, do that. You know I'm sorry. We both know things pop up. Maybe a DM comes in. You really need to yep. attend to. You need to do some research on somebody. You have context. You have a heartfelt reply, etc. Is have you ever tried to integrate your family or integrate your friends into hmm. what you're doing in that moment, or does that just come off contrived? Yeah, no, I, I I don't I don't like doing that. And I I used to be very open about my time, and people will call me and pick my brain for hours, and it's really unproductive. Uh, so now it's all either it's on the calendar or it's not. Brian knows this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if I don't have you on my calendar, don't call me, don't show up. You want to make an appointment, uh, my time is valuable. If you were yeah. a doctor, if you were a lawyer, uh, you would understand that people need to have appointments, that your, your time is very valuable. As an entrepreneur, you have to treat it the same way. People need yeah. to speak with you set up a calendar account on Calendly or use some other interactive way, have people and force them to make an appointment to speak with you 
I don't pick up the phone a lot because people call me to ask me silly questions and I don't mind doing it when I have the time, but when I'm busy, I don't want to talk to anybody else. I, I, it, Alex, do, do you, when you say integrate, though, I, I just, I understood a little differently. When you say integrate them into it, do you mean make them a part of that whole social experience? No, it's more kind of like, say something pops up or say an experience happens and I feel like it's a moment that I want to include, especially with going live or Instagram stories. I mean, I don't do a lot of the stories, but I see that the people that do them regularly, they're not alone. The people yeah. all around them must somehow be assisting and hopefully that person isn't getting a whole bunch of crap for it right after, you know, the phone gets put on the table and my, you know, am I gonna, I like, uh, the concept of the calendar is, is smart and uh, I really need to get better at that as uh, many of the people in my life know, but um, it, things pop up and in this social world, it's about what's happening now. So I do understand blocking off time but if we come upon a parade and I want to go live talking about it and, you know, my family or my sister is giving me the side eye, it's just a question of is it worth it? And I'm just trying to yeah, balance but just, all the things. Listen, just like you have a calendar to do calls, to do sales, to do specific tasks, whether you're responding to proposals or writing contracts, um, same thing with your content. Um, my wife and I have a YouTube channel when we talk about German Shepherds and we rescue Whoa, German Shepherds. I gotta get in there. Yeah, we have we have over a million views per, per video and you, well, we only do it on the weekends and it's only a scheduled times when we go and we do a, a specific video and, and I don't spend a lot of time. I do answer questions on the channel, um, but it's, it's also in the schedule. Okay, on Sunday we're going to do a video about this and we're scheduled it in advance. And you know, I, I when you do schedule content to go actually go out and create as opposed to kind of spontaneously hope something cool is going to happen, the quality is often higher. So of course, absolutely, of course it is. You think the walking dead, they just said, all right, take all the swords and start just chopping heads off. It's all very specifically scheduled. All, a lot of these really good YouTubers that you see out there or people that are creating great content, they actually write scripts for it and, and they do it in a very scheduled way. So you end up with better. There was an interview I did a while ago and one of the quotes is probably on my Instagram or on Twitter says, spend more time building quality content. It's not about the quantity of it, but it's the quality of it. And that makes a big difference. Thank you guys for this great con. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you perfect. Sorry about that. I uh, guess I'm in a reception zone. But yeah, just. Yeah, Alex, you're, you're in a bad reception zone. Thanks for calling, brother. Hope it was helpful. Well, we got to go to the next call. Thanks so much, guys. Much love. Bye. All right, so Victor. Can we do Victor? Yeah. Yeah, and then we have another uh, calling person calling right now. So okay. this is, you're kind of like the man. Everybody wants to talk to you. All right, so Victor, what's the question? Um, Victor, I, he's a realtor, and he says, what about branding yourself, not just selling the product, but selling your driving services? Yes, very, very important thing. Um, I, I have, from the beginning when I started doing this, I wanted to be known um, as the guy who understood digital, and I'm kind of like carving that out as my own niche. Um, there were instances when my personal brand, Eder Hogan, was much larger than the business that I was involved. And whether it's raising capital, whether it's for marketing purposes, whether it's for other things, sometimes that happens. It doesn't work in every single industry, but we know about, I don't know, Trump in terms of real estate. We know about Mark Cuban in technology. And sometimes a brand, you don't really care what Mark Cuban does. You yep. care about Mark Cuban himself. So it really depends. Are you building a personal brand or are you building a particular business? In some cases, it's both. Uh, Barbara Corker on Real Estate, she built a huge brand that was basically herself. Um, so there are instances in which your personality is embedded into your brand and is part of it. If you're doing particular services, real estate, you're doing, in some cases, technology and other things, your personality, who you are, your values are part of your brand and they're embedded together. Um, it's ultimately really about deciding what's more important. 
if you're building a technology platform like Facebook or you're building something really large, maybe that brand is more important than your own personal brand and you just want to be behind the scenes. So it's kind of a personal choice, uh, but the important thing is understanding what value you bring as a personal as a personal brand to your particular business model, yep. right? So if, if he wants to be the realtor known as the realtor for the stars or for the realtor for whatever particular segment, and his values are about being honest with clients, about being upfront, about helping, whatever it is, that needs to be translated into your content, into your marketing, into your website, that becomes part of who you are. Yeah. Um, I, I, I had mentioned, I'm not gonna say his name, but there's some guy who runs around making videos about being a digital marketing expert um, and I'm not a big fan and, and I think he's just very loud and, and that's not my personality that's not who I am right um, and I don't try to be him I'm me and that this is who I am I'm soft-spoken I'm a lot more calm in everything that I do um, so that that translates into your culture as a business for your employees for the people that you do business with uh, every person is becoming a content provider, yep. a publisher, yep. and tools like this allow you to create your own content. People build their own uh, channels on, on, on YouTube, which a lot of them turn out to be bigger than channels on Fox or CBS. So we have moved, good quote, from mass marketing, the idea of just mark to me marketing, <laughs> building personal connections, and yep. building that connection with your audience, and that's very important. You have to have enough passion to continue to move forward. It's about persevering through the difficult times. Hopefully you get a big reward at the end, which is what we all want, but it's not always the case. There's a lot of failure and you have to learn to be okay with failing at things, businesses, ideas, because that's part of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, and I actually want to add, just add on to that or supplement those two things. The first is like the first thing that you said is actually like a million dollar piece of advice for people because I have seen time and time and time again people waste hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars tr trying to prove themselves right because they're so attached to the idea that they're like no but this is a good idea and it's six months goes by and then 12 months goes by and literally people are mortgaging off their houses and they're selling their stuff yeah. because they know for sure that this is a good idea and the market is selling the market is selling, no one's buying anything the market is saying no it's a really bad idea and and all of a sudden because you're so romantic about your and you're so attached to your idea you've just spent your entire life savings on this idea and the market doesn't say the second thing is when you're when you think you have an idea that could become a business there are two things that I think are really important. The first thing is you first, before you sell anything, you get feedback around someone. So if you're a Latino looking for love for this app idea, I wouldn't go up to you and be like, hey, Edder, um, are you a Latino looking for love? Because I have an app you should buy. Or would you be interested? It'd be like, no, instead explore the processes of people. So, hey, are you seeing anybody? Yes, oh, okay, cool, How, how's it going? How did you meet them? What was frustrating you about dating? What was, what was a solution that was offered to you that made dating easier? And then you listen to all of that, and then you go and build something around, like, because eventually, if you talk to 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 people, you're gonna start to see some themes, and then you build your product around those themes. So that is how, you know, that's the first part. And then the second part in terms of the passion is it's so incredibly important. And again, like you said, like, it's, it's cliche, right? Like, everyone's like, do what you're passionate about. But like, if you're an entrepreneur, and you're doing something for the money, and you know this better than anyone, like if you're doing something for the money, you're just in deep trouble. Yep. I mean, you're just in deep trouble because you, you will, you will. first of all, the second things go south, and they always go south, like a lot, all the time, you'll be, you'll be out. So a um, couple of things in closing. Um, number one, I am going to be giving away five of these fantastic books to people that are watching this YouTube, people that are watching on our social lives, if, and the only thing you have to do is you have to write us one concrete action that you have are not you're going to take, that you have already taken based on the advice that Edder shared today, and hashtag BTV, and then I will send you, I'm gonna buy five of these, I'm gonna send you these, and Edder has nicely agreed to sign the copies. So uh, you'll be getting a signed copy from him. That's number one. Number two, for those of you that don't win this competition award thingy that we're doing, please pick this book up. Um, I've read it a couple of times. 
It is just an incredible story of a man who went through hell, literally, in the worst time to live in one of the most dangerous places in the entire world, and how he came out stronger, better, wiser, more creative, and hungrier than ever to build multi-million dollar businesses in the United States, which in and of itself is amazing. You are one of the best. The second I met you, I guess a year ago, two years ago, I knew that I wanted to be friends with you. Really grateful for your contributions, not only to the people watching this show, but to the world. Um, so, edderholgein.com, we'll put it up for you. Um, One Cube, if you're interested in hiring his firm, he is doing some extremely cutting edge stuff. He actually told me I don't really wanna talk about the, the business today, I wanna to just straight up add value. So check out the site, we'll put that up as well um, for really incredibly fraction of a cost marketing stuff uh, with insanely sophisticated data, I've seen it firsthand. And um, just more importantly, uh, follow this guy on the social world let him help you the way that he's helped me and so many others. So, my brother, thank you so much for coming yeah, in today. Uh, it's your hour, it's your dream, it's your life, so go get it, because if you don't, nobody else will. Keep dreaming of Hope Street. Thank you, brother.